Well, hello, I'm Feedback Gaming, your British guide to playing computer games in unconventional ways. Definitely how the devs intended. This is Hearts of Volume 4, a game where you take a country in the 1930s and 1940s and pilot it all the way to victory, but with unconventional ways. What? You own an old beat up banger of a tank? And you want to upgrade it to something monstrous and powerful like a Tiger 2? Well, this is the video for you. Free vehicle upgrades. Upgrade your measly machine gun panzer to an all out juggernaut with sloped armor, cast armor, and the biggest turret we can get for absolutely no cost. Unlimited free upgrades in Hearts of Iron 4. Single player, new game, 1936. The world, but not as you know it. Before Europe was balkanized. Why not play the front man? Mr. Germany. Are you going to be up to any uh, troublesome deeds today? If we click on the production tab here and look at the tanks that we're producing, we could upgrade this measly Panzer II into something monstrous. Maximum armor, engine, cast armor, why not slap on a field drum? Sloped armor, additional machine gun. And the biggest turret we can get, most expensive, the close support gun. Now those are some nice stats for a 1930s tank. And we can upgrade as many of these tanks as we can at absolutely no cost. But now, get ready for the ultimate adrenaline rush with War Thunder. The most comprehensive vehicle combat ever, and it's free to play on PC and consoles. Take command over 2,500 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships from 10 major nations. Spanning from the era of biplanes to the modern jet fighter, become immersed in the combat of War Thunder with immense detailed vehicles, graphics, and sound effects. With a community of over 70 million players worldwide engaging in constant epic PvP battles, War Thunder is a haven for fans of military history. That's right, you. Drive any tank, fly any aircraft, and sail any ships with just a mouse, keyboard, or controller, even in simulator mode. Whether it's PC, PlayStation, or Xbox, simply click the link provided in the pinned comment and video description and get into the battlefield. If you're new or you're a returning player that hasn't played for six months, you will be able to take advantage of this bonus pack waiting for you which includes multiple premium vehicles, Eagle of Valor decor, generous 100,000 silver lions, and seven days of premium for free. This is a limited deal, so take advantage of it while you can. Click the link in the description. I'll see you on the battlefield. The only requirement is that we produce the cheapest possible one, and we can get an unbelievably dirty cheap tank here. One man turret, machine gun tank, gasoline engine. Look at that beast. Is this a World War I tank? Uh, maybe a little bit more advanced than that. The chassis is up to date. However, the armaments on this one is relatively weak. Look at this boy, machine gun tank. Is this the future? No, no, it's not. Now, if we want to maximize this abusive strategy, we need to research the bigger cannons. And if you look really closely, here we go. The close support gun. And then you've got options for the medium howitzer. And look at that soft attack damage. So, artillery. Get it researched. And of course, it's Hearts of Iron 4 game. You're going to build your industry up ready for the war. So let's do that now. Starting steps to a Hoi 4 game. Germany's going to need a big army. So let's start training. Maximum amount of training. Maximum amount of divisions. And that allow us to rush down some of these focuses. Because we're going to make it a tank, the state of the art. But quite early in the game, in the 1930s, you need a tank that's got lots of reliability. Can you see this? This, this Mark II tank has 210% reliability. Compared to like 75 or 75 here or 80. So we're going to go with a light tank. I know that's a little bit unconventional. But it allows us to maximize this strategy because we can produce really old bad tanks that we can convert over into state-of-the-art fighting machines. And with that, we're gonna need a little bit more armor. So let's slap some of that armor on. And what better tank designer to use than this one? Standardized production, if you look here, makes tanks cheaper, but also hurts their stats by a small amount. We can fix that. So let's do that now. First thing we need to do is we need army XP because we need to design that weak substandard tank that will hire our chief of the army. And this is gonna give us ticking army XP. And when we've got about 20 army XP, That'll be enough to make this tank. 
artillery research. We need more artillery because we need a big fat howitzer. Working with the Soviets to get more advanced tank models. This will definitely come in handy. Hey, Mayos! Improve our infantry equipment by going for more production based stuff. Definitely. If you hold shift, you can queue them all up. And then I never have to look at this again. Thank goodness. Infrastructure to begin with. Then folded with the civilian factories. Don't build in the Autobahn because you're going to get the infrastructure there for free. No point building here. We'll save that for later. How very German of me. Spanish Civil War. Help out the Nationalists. Feels like something the Germans would do, right? Send three divisions. Let's do that. And with air volunteers. Look at this. More tank technology? Yeah. I think that'll work. Rommel fighting in Africa. I don't even think Rommel was a general at this point. Doesn't matter. He's here now and he's going to do some damage. Just attack and be aggressive. And with a little bit of air power, uh, this should be like a knife through butter. Well, that was easy. The secret to winning the war in Spain is just to walk into the provinces the AI aren't defending. Like, there's nobody here. So, well, I guess we just walk in there. As if there's nobody even there to begin with. And that was hard work. Army Innovations 2. Very well named. And in the meantime, now we've got the option to go for the more advanced tanks. Now, the reason why we're starting off on light tanks is they've got great reliability. If we want that level of reliability, we're going to have to go for the more advanced mediums, which you can see 80% here and then 100% here, then 120% for the most advanced medium. And the heavies work the same way, 110%. And what we're going to do is take advantage of the heavies and the beauty of heavies. The beauty of it is you have the ability to go for the biggest, fattest cannons. And that is the heavy cannons. There we go. The heavy howitzer. Look at that. 55 soft attack. Now, there's no way you can fit this on a light tank. The chassis just can't handle it. Firing this tank on a light tank would probably rip the chassis in half. But if it's a big enough chassis that can hold the gun, this will be perfect. Even more perfect when you can upgrade it for free. The light tank. Let's make it. So we're going to start off with the most advanced chassis because it's got fantastic reliability. Then we'll go for the cheapest possible one-man turret, the cheapest possible gun, and everything else is pretty much the same. When it comes down to the tank, I think probably the diesel is what we're going to go for because of the higher reliability. There's no point going over 100% reliability, but this will be upgraded later on and we'll assign our standardized production. This is not what we want, but it is a stepping stone towards greatness. Look at the machine gun boy in his adolescence, about to grow up and become a subscriber. Maybe you want to become a subscriber. Maybe think about it. Optional. Give it a go. 12 XP. Don't mind if I do. Start producing it under standardized production. Pop you to the top. And then we'll start popping out a few of you boys. And we've still got a few to begin with anyway. And look at this. The ability to upgrade. Oh, but we're not going to be upgrading. We'll be doing free upgrades when the time comes along. What's better than something? Nothing. That's right free get your war support get your mobilization build your factories more industry i'm gonna need a lot of military factories here so i'm gonna do something i don't usually do i'm gonna start making civs in 1937 and i'm gonna start making mills and because we've got mefo bills we got 25 percent construction bonus for mills look at that 10 percent's good 20 percent is great but 25 is just oh, it's the cherry on top and now you're gonna build these at lightning speed unlimited tanks followed by unlimited speed on the autobahn build it we're going to be using tanks so we're going to need a little bit of oil so we'll build a little bit of that in the autobahn but for now prioritizing mills is more important a little bit ahead of schedule but would you like a piece of austria well go for it and that's the reason why we're able to do this is because we've produced so much infantry now we're making some light tanks and we're going to need at least ten thousand of them that's right you heard me right ten thousand tanks so Get producing. The Spanish Civil War. Well, what's left of it? It's done. I think it was like 939 until the Spanish Civil War's wrapped up. 937. Nice. 937. So Deton, we're hitting all those world records today. And now we've reached the sweet spot. 96 divisions. Why 96, you say? Well, that is four full armies consisting of 24 divisions each. Split, split, split. And assign them onto a field marshal. One for here, one for here, and then one for here. Well, two for there. You've reached the point where you're producing so much. When it comes down to tanks, it makes me question, am I actually making too many tanks? I think I actually am. I think we're probably going to make a few civvies now, just to balance things out. Look at this. 15,000 light tanks. Is that enough? Possibly. The perfect tank needs the perfect division. So in this case, we'll add some anti-air on. 
and then possibly add on the light tank. Have we got enough light tanks to do this? It is going to need, you look here, just under 6,000 light tanks per battalion. So that means we're perfect. Two light tank battalions. We're not going to add this on yet, though. I think what we'll just do is add the anti-air on, because we'll come back to that, because we're going to upgrade this division, aren't we? The anti-air has been added on. Goodbye, Czechoslovakia. Exercise to level three. The improved heavy tank chassis. 120 reliability for the advanced heavy tank. Yeah, sure, let's do it. Look, 24,000 light tanks, but they're not very good. No, they're not ideal. In fact, in all fairness, they're not very good at all. Let's give them an icon that makes them... I don't know. It gives me represents how unbelievably weak they are. That's it. The little wee boy, that one. So how do we upgrade this tank? Well, first of all, you need a large amount of them in the stockpile of the weak ones. So 24,000 is more than enough. Perfect. First things first, what we have to do is declare that this is an old model. So the Panzer 2A is an old model. So we'll discontinue that by creating a brand new model and then saving it and then start producing the B. We don't really want the B, but that's what we're going to work on. Then we need to decide that the Panzer A, 2A, needs to be sold on the international market. Yeah, sell all of them on the market. And we have 22,000 of them of just this model. So these are the ones we're going to be upgrading. We've got a bunch of old, old models and also a bunch of Czech tanks. But the Panzer 2A, put the whole lot on the market. Boom. You book and buy it. Well, not really, but you'll see why this needs to be done. Now we need to create the L tank. So production. Then we hop into build armored vehicles. Remember, the one we've got 22,000 models of, the Panzer 2A, hop into it and then immediately start making changes. So we're going to maximize the engine, improve the Mayo. Then we're also going to put a three man turret on for the breakthrough. Then we're going to add on the biggest turret for soft attack, which is a close support gun. And it comes down to turrets. It's kind of a weak turret because there's some bigger ones for the bigger chassis, but for now, that'll do just fine. And now we're going to stack soft attack. So a small cannon for the extra soft attack. And then we've got extra things like machine guns, machine guns, and machine guns. Cast armor, it's expensive, but we can afford it because a free upgrade is definitely free, right? Top that off, I'm going to go for a diesel engine because the reliability is fabulous. That is no longer a weak boy. That is a very strong boy. We've increased the soft attack by plus 25. Armor has gone up by 38, breakthrough by 28. This tank now has proper stats. Save. Now what we do is hop into the international market, sell, but cancel the market order of these what we put on. Can you see something here that's very interesting? We put these on with five soft attack heavy machine gun tanks. Look at the soft attack now. 33. They seem to have gone through some kind of transformation. Huh. Removed from equipment. And if we look into our logistics now, light tanks, we have 22.4 thousand of these tanks. And look there. Can you see that? The soft attack of these tanks is 33. The stats of this tank have gone up by times four overnight. Well, it's not even overnight. It happened in an instant. Guys, these tanks have magically upgraded. Now, this one is a tough exploit to get your mind around. And I'm going to demonstrate a few times in this video. So keep watching and I'll show you even ways you can upgrade more even more expensive equipment oh you've seen nothing yet all of a sudden i really like this tank and i want to give it a different icon give it something that looks mean oh that looks so mean so mean recommission it decommission the old one we'll start producing these and there we go Twenty-four thousand of the most advanced light tank that has ever roamed this earth that's debatable but regardless we can now add that on to our infantry light 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 do we have enough light tanks to do this we actually do 17,000 and boom our entire army now consists of light tank infantry space marine infantry with insane soft attack eye-watering soft attack exercise those boys to level three and you're about to see the craziest blitzkrieg that's ever going to happen to poland and see as we've got uh, infantry that has armor that can move why not go for proper heritage and then why not just upgrade the tanks a little bit more by uh adding on force so therefore overall we get more speed and then overall it has more combat capabilities six kilometers per hour which is the minimum speed of the light tank i'll definitely take that a little bit of an early danziger war we can do it we have the firepower when you've got so many tanks you might have to import some fuel from the soviet union 
is a good problem to have, put it that way. Dunzig, all war, declare. So, light tanks, maximum soft attack with horses. What's the outcome? That's right, we do like five times more damage than them. A very unconventional Blitzkrieg. Definitely something Germany would be proud of in the day. However, it is very strange that they have so many light tanks. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what to say. This is disgusting. Not a surprise, but Poland can't pierce the armor on these tanks. I mean, they are advanced for their time. However, Poland's not really got the equipment to deal with this. So a worthy opponent is definitely probably going to be France. Pop goes the Poland. Netherlands, can you put up more of a fight? Let's find out. Rommel, light tanking through the Netherlands. I blinked and I missed that war. I think there was more pop-ups blocking me than actual battles. And that's it. Again, Belgium. Oh my goodness, the Blitzkrieg. Get this, we've blitzed Belgium so quickly that they've not even be able to put troops on the border of France. That is insane. And in that case, I guess we just keep going. The speed bump has arrived. And once again, supply problems are a nightmare, but we just Blitzkrieg the entirety of France. Nice. Casualties. Uh, we sustained 12,000 casualties. Remember, that was the whole of the Lowlands, France, and Poland. Meanwhile, the Allies sustained 358,000. Is there any point delaying this? Not really. It's the inevitable. Do it. The quickest turnaround ever. Supply problems. But can it be done? I have a funny feeling it can. Ooh, the initial breakthrough is a little bit slow. But when we get through the Lowlands, we just absolutely demolish them. Initial speed bump, but we're making a breakthrough and we're doing damage. And once again, the stats are just speaking for themselves. I want to fix the railways though. Yeah, it might be something to work on next. Remember, this is a mobile division, so you've got the ability to take advantage of the awesome doctrine of Blitzkrieg. And also you get to take advantage of the fact that you can make it circumference. But I'm just plowing into the front line here and I'm doing pretty much A-OK. -okay. We have lost 80,000 to the Soviet Union, so this is a lot more messy. However, the Soviet Union has lost 200k. Ow! This is definitely a Blitzkrieg. Surprisingly, actually, we don't actually qualify for a Blitzkrieg because it has to be over 50% hardness. But these wouldn't even qualify. Never mind. I guess it has to be a harder division. And the hardness of this division is only 17%. So there's a lot of potential for improvement for this division. Uh, the best in circumference. The accidental ones. Nope, I didn't even plan to make this. It just naturally happened, probably due to the terrain. Might as well just finish them off there. Soviet Union, Barbarossa, it's a very wide front, so maybe an extra army here would go along with join the front lads. No lie, most successful Blitzkrieg ever. You know what to do at this point. The supply's bad, so you just push for all the supply depots. F4, supply depots, push forward for them. And the supply's bad, you just fight through the supply. Force march. Historically, that always worked, right? Right? The last major city, Leningrad. Don't need Romanian oil anymore. We've got our own. The modern Blitzkrieg. Breakthrough. What is the breakthrough in this division? 88. You know what? Well, that isn't that great. But it's only a light tank. What if we were going to take it all the way to a heavy tank? I promise you a King Tiger, didn't I? And I will deliver. What are the casualties, Dave? 1.8 million on the Soviet side. And we have lost to the Soviets 307k. That's a decent ratio. Could be better with field hospitals. Could be better with encirclements. But do you know what? For a battle plan push, that's pretty good. 99% 100. We take the lot. And yeah, that's right. Look closely. You see it right. We will not take it lightly on the Soviets. And meanwhile, oh yeah, D-Day. We want to take care of that. D-Day, how effective is it? Not so much. I'm curious to see how many losses they take here. So there are 82,000 now. And we've cleared them up. Almost. It went from 82,000 losses to half a million. And Churchill's like, maybe they'll survive the Soviets for an extra six months so we get a little bit of time to move into Germany? Nope. I think that's probably the entirety of the French army and uh, probably half of the UK army as well. Disgusting. The advanced heavy tank chassis i promised you i promised you a king tiger and look at this baby oh it's so beautiful isn't it a shame too few of these are made at the end of the war to actually make a meaningful impact it makes me wonder if they actually were the future of tanks the main battle tank as of today they're all based on the late models of tanks in the war like the panther and the king tiger the more you know anyway so we need to go cheap this is going to look so ugly if you ever imagine this, but a one-man small turret on a king tiger. The thought of that just makes me feel really uncomfortable. Ugh. 
and also a machine gun. It's basically like a rolling bunker, isn't it? An MG42 mounted on a big rolling armored bunker. That makes me feel really uncomfortable. Anyway, this is the one we're going to go with. We need to produce a healthy amount of these. Exactly eight per day, which is insanely high for such an advanced heavy tank. What are we doing here, Dave? Making a few heavy tanks, I see. Chromium cost is absolutely through the roof. Turkey, help us out. That's a thumbs up for the Turkish viewers. Need to make a template that goes really well with the division. So I guess we can probably afford some motorized now. And to top it off now, we need heavy tanks. Ideally, we have 50% hardness, but I don't think we're going to be able to do that. 47% hardness... There we go, 52% hardness with organization of 52. Which actually is pretty impressive now I think about it. And if we were to convert a full army to this, we're going to need 7,000 trucks and 8,000 heavy tanks. Wow, we're quite far away from that. We better start building. Is it time to become greater Germany? Sure. And all it really is is a name change. Actually, we're a slightly darker color. Very menacing, very scary. I think it's time now to see the final form of this strategy. Power level over 10 million. So, we produce enough King Tigers now, but these are unbelievably awful. I mean, look at the stats on them. Single digits for piercing, hard attack, and soft attack. And even then, the breakthrough in armor isn't even that great either. We can go better than this. So, what we're going to do is the same thing. So, we're going to select our tank. We're going to specifically create a variant that is a new one. Save it, and then start producing this new variant. And we don't really want this variant because it's the same as the old one. But, the old model is going to go on the market. Armor, King Tiger, 8,000 King Tigers, all of them on the market. There it is. Can you see that? And it has single digit soft attack and hard attack. Not good. Let's improve that. So we hop into production now. Click on to build a new armored tank assembly line and look for the old model. Click on here to show outdated and find the King Tiger. Here it is. First thing we're going to do is hold shift and left click on engine and armor. And you can see it's still considered a King Tiger. Perfect. Now we're going to put on a tur turret, a worthy turret, and that will be a heavy howitzer. 55 soft attack. Wow. But it won't let us proceed. Can you see the X here? So what we need to do is to get a turret on this tank that will fit this heavy one, and it has to be a heavy turret type. In this case, we're going to go for the three man, and that has insane breakthrough as well. Cast armor for the extra hardness and armor. Definitely. Why not go further and improve the suspension? We've got options for breakthrough or speed. Go for speed, why not? Got the option to improve it with the Mayo, and then we've got extra slots. So why not add extra cannons on it? This seems stupid. It is stupid, uh, but we've just created a land battleship with a howitzer, and it's full of cannons all around it. You attack this from the front, the sides, or the rear, you're going to have a bad time. We're not done yet. Why don't you go for a Petric Electric Engine? It has the best stats. However, it's eye-watchingly expensive. Defense, breakthrough, goodbye reliability, 0%. Is this still doable? Yes. Save it. Then we look on the market and look at the stats. 75 soft attack. Amazing. That's it. Look in the logistics. That's right. The Panzer, the King, Tiger has now got 75 soft attack. Mr. Rommel, would you like to be awarded with the greatest of tank to invade the little Italy. As you can see now, when we produce this King Tiger, the turret is so expensive. Look at the production cost. If you hover over it, we're suffering from a 71% penalty. That's insane. And the resources required are once again, eye-watering. I don't even think we've got the economy to sustain this. No, we don't. That just shows the cost of these big fat turrets for the heavy tanks are just insanely high. 10 days to justify on Italy. All lined up. Panzer expert, you better believe it. I'm so excited to see this. I am so excited to see the ultimate final form and the soft attack damage. Oh, we're attacking into mountains, but the damage is still 500 soft attack and they just melt. They melt instantly. Disgusting. I dread to look what the equipment losses are like as well because these have zero percent reliability they fire a single shot and then they break down yeah it's pretty much what i expected this assault has lasted less than two days and we've lost almost 1500 heavy tanks the losses are absolutely catastrophic but listen this tank works petro electric engine maybe was a step too far possibly but overall you can see here now you have the potential to upgrade something from a very measly 10 production cost for the Panzer A baby machine gun tank 
to the monstrous, colossal 57 cost of this mean beast that has zero reliability. And it will not be long before these divisions don't even have any heavy tanks in them anymore because we've burnt through them all. So effective. It was my own downfall. If you want to support my content, don't forget to like and subscribe and YouTube will feed you more of this kind of content. Listen, thank you for me into the end. It means a lot to me. Thank you for allowing me to make content like this. You're amazing. You have been given feedback. Goodbye. Again, thank you to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to play it free on PC, PlayStation, Xbox by using the link in the pinned comment or the video description. New and returning players that haven't played for six months will also receive the massive bonus pack across all platforms, which includes premium vehicles and goodies. Limited time available, so make the most of it.